What is karma? As explained by Paramahansa Yogananda. As you sow, so shall you reap. If you sow evil, you will reap evil in the form of suffering. And if you sow goodness, you will reap goodness in the form of inner joy. To understand karma, you must realize that thoughts are things. The final analysis is composed not of matter but of consciousness. Matter responds more than people realize to the power of thought. For what power directs energy and energy in turn acts upon matter. Matter is indeed energy. Every thought, every action, reaps its own corresponding rewards. We need to realize that human suffering is not a sign of God or nature's anger with mankind. It is a sign rather of mankind's ignorance to the divine law of karma. The law is forever infallible in its workings. Souls are made in the image of God. Even the greatest sinner cannot be a sinner forever, as eventually over lifetimes eventually wakes up from his delusion and remembers its real eternally good nature. Man may misuse his free will for a time, but that temporary delusion can never erase from within him God's image of perfection. A baby's premature death cannot possibly have permitted him to use his free will to be either virtuous or vicious. Nature must bring back that soul back to earth to give chance to use its free will to work out past karma which caused it to die so young and to perform the good actions that lead to liberation. Ordinary souls therefore reincarnate compelled by their earth-bound desires. Great souls on the other hand, come to earth only partly to work out their karma but principally to act as a noble son of God to show and guide lost souls the way to the divine creator. How do souls attract a bodily home? When good parents unite in physical union, they produce pure astral light as the positive and negative currents at the base of their spine, and their sex organs unite. This light is a signal to good souls with compatible vibrations in the astral world to be physically conceived in the union of the sperm and ovum. When the soul enters, the embryo is formed and the body is gradually made ready to be born. Souls with negative karma to work out have to enter the body of a problematic mother. When low vibrational parents come into physical union, they form a dim, impure light at the base of the spine, signaling for souls with bad karma to enter the body and to experience that life. Like attracts like, souls with good karma are born into good families. Good families attract good souls and bad families attract souls with bad karma. We hear often from people who do not understand these laws that say, how can God make this one suffer and that one die young or that terrible accident or killing happen? How can a fair and loving God allow this to happen or do this, leading to people to become atheists? God is not a divine autocrat passing judgment on people for their actions. The judgments of cosmic law are based on the karmic cause and effect of people's past actions, from past lives, are fair and just. Your life is like a movie and you are the main character who has free will to choose what actions and thoughts you make. When you misuse your God-given independence, you must suffer the material consequences of your own wrong actions or also the rewards through your own good or virtuous deeds. When God sees that a soul by misuse of his free will and bad company has lost itself in the forest of egotism or evil actions, God becomes concerned for him and sends a spiritual aid to bring him back to his fold of divine and virtuous living. He helps souls to reincarnate in places where they can work out their karma and evolve back to their true essence. All souls on earth belong to the fold of God and are guided by the invisible shepherd or Holy Spirit that forever looks after them when necessary. The alternating nights and days of earth and the alternative sorrows and joy of life in people's lives are set by karma, the law of cause and effect. The key is to view life's ups and downs with a serene mind. For outward existence is a mere temporary movie, sometimes you are experiencing a drama, even a tragic one, we need to look back and say, I have learned from that, or I am grateful for that experience, as it has taught me much about myself. It is when we turn to anger or depression from difficult moments that make our lives full of misery and suffering. Let nothing affect you inwardly, try to always remain non-attached, even in the dark hours of bereavement. Keep a joyful attitude and know that this is meant to be as every failure will turn to success and every moment of sorrow will eventually turn to joy. View them dispassionately and never allow them to define who you are inside. Karma is our own responsibility. 
It is a result of individual choice. People who say, I am a bad person because my karma made me so. Or this person pushed me to do it, and it's his fault, not mine, is to reason dangerously. People have been conditioned to blame their problems on others' treatment of them, on the cruelty or indifference of their parents, partners or friends. This is to avoid having to face the need to improve themselves and take the necessary action to move away from these difficult life situations. Every situation or circumstance in our lives, every habit was something we created, whether recently or in the past. Each one is due to misusing our free will of choice. Blame no one for anything that happens to you, except responsibility for your own life or misfortunes you encounter. Do your best to avoid and eliminate harmful tendencies, people or situations and above all, always be connected to God. Be led from today guided by divine wisdom from within. Living from within leads to freedom from karma. Most humans refuse to be guided by within or by higher wisdom. Instead influenced by the deeply entrenched habits they created from the past. Most humans are slaves to their own conditioning and controlled by habits. Many believe things happen in their lives by luck whether good or bad. The more we live guided from within, the greater our control of outward events in this game of life. For when we live at our center or higher self, in the superconsciousness, we live in the only true freedom there is. Instead of accepting the decrees of karma, follow the inner way to freedom. Meditate daily, commune with God, learn from Him, through the silent voice of intuition which is the way out of soul degrading self-habits and bad karma. Live your life by harming no one or yourself. Live your life with love, peace and inner joy so karma has no hold or control on your life. Some are born strong and healthy, others are born weak and sick, some are born into wealthy families and others into poverty, some are born short or tall, slim or stocky. When we understand the divine law of karma, we understand why this occurs. We need to be grateful for who we are and the life that we have, irrespective of what other people have or look like. Concentrate on living within and being grateful the life you have been given. I hope you enjoyed this and have a great day my friends.